Hey there, game developers. It's me, Titan Hex, and I'm back with another tutorial. This time we are going to be going into the contents section of the event editor. We're going to go through some of the event commands that you can do. Uh, we, if you remember from last time, we went through this section over here on the left and the top section, but we never went into the contents area. The reason for that is because the event commands that we have at our disposal are just so numerous. You can so see so many of them here in these three tabs that it's important that we just go through it, our own tutorial and break these down so that you know some of the cool things that you can do. Each of these is going to get their own uh, section of a tutorial. Some of them might have their own, like the conditional branch is actually gonna be its very own tutorial. Loop might be its own uh, with a few other p parts. And of course, Common events might be their own tutorial. Um, so just be obviously switches and variables are going to be their own. So just be ready for that. Some of them might also be lumped together. Some of these are so quick and easy to go through that probably party and actor will be lumped together. I'm sure message won't require very much. So expect some of those tutorials to either be short or just multiple parts in a single tutorial, especially if they're very similar. So just be, heads, be be aware of that. With that little introduction, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the event command. So the first thing is how to make, uh, how to add a new event command to this list of events uh, in our contents area. So the first thing we can do is double click the blue line and that'll allow us to create a event command by bringing up this menu and allow us to choose. We can also hit the enter key and the event commands menu br is brought up as well. And we can also right click and do new. So all of those work. So for example, if I created a show text, there we go. Now, if I hit enter again, it's just gonna create another event command. If I want to edit an event command, I'm going to have to either do one of two things. I'm gonna either click on the event command that I want to change and then hit space. And then I can make edits and changes as I see fit or I can right click and go to edit. Both of those work and it helps you quickly edit and change things around as needed. So with that out of the way, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the message uh, section here in the event commands. So messages are pretty easy. Um, basically, if you wanna show text or show, show the person, somebody talking, uh, maybe a you got X item display or anything like that this message area is how you do it there is a ton of stuff you can do you can pick faces you can create choices so i could create a choose your name sort of thing all right so if it lets me choose your well, unfortunately the keyboard i'm using is new to me choose name and then you could uh click the show choices and you can get a whole bunch of names here and I'll go into the message thing later. Right now we don't want to go too deep into messages. The other things that you can do in this is input number. So this allows the player to put a number into the game and then you can figure out what they put into the game. Um, it's a good way for a player to input a number like maybe a lock or a passcode or something like that. This is great to do that. Next is select item. This allows the player to choose an item from their inventory and then the game will memorize which item they chose. And you can use that for a few different things like do you have a potion and then they have to grab a potion from their inventory to give to them. Things like that all work out very well. So keep that in mind. Select item allows you to do that. And of course, scrolling text is that one that just lets text flow down the screen. Uh, great for exposition and stuff like that. Next is game progression. So this allows the game to sort of change and grow and adapt. Uh, of course, control, uh, control switches, control variables, self switch, all of those will be covered in their own tutorial. I'm not gonna go over them right now. Just know that this allows you to change your game and really make it respond back to the player. Uh, control timer is just a very simple timer that we can start. It goes for four minutes. We can stop it at any time. Um, 
It's great with a conditional branch that checks for timers, uh, but for the most part, game progression and control timer is, um, all of this stuff works out really well. You're going to need to know these. Uh, you can get away with just about anything, but conditional branch, the, the flow control and the game progression sections are the most important and you're gonna be using those a lot. So we're gonna go into those soon enough, but uh, right now we, we're just going through a quick breakdown. So conditional branch, that one is one of the most important ones. Uh, the entire game is gonna really depend on conditional branches. So you're gonna wanna learn those in the next tutorial. But for now, uh, we're gonna go through flow control real quick. It's just basically a lot of, hmm, it's really hard, it, it's just as it sounds. It's the flow of the game. It's, it's a mix between game pro progression and uh, all that. So the game could flow a whole bunch of different ways using the flow control. It allows us to do a lot of processing and some of the core parts of programming. So this is really, these two areas are where you're going to want to spend most of your time. So just keep that in mind. Party is changing things about your party, the, the members, um, the items, weapons, gold, like the whole, everything your characters are carrying um, as a collective, uh, your party members, just things like that. So that is all kept in party. And then for each individual party member, you have the actor command. So an actor is basically a member of your party. You can use change MP, change HP. You can change just a whole bunch of stats about a character using these. So just keep that in mind. You can update a whole bunch of stuff about them. You can change a whole bunch of stuff. You can do neat little quirks and quick edits here and there just to play around. So the actor is really good for that. Movement is basically how you're, you change between maps, how you move on maps, things like that. You're going to want to do quite a few things with set movement route. That's going to be very useful for setting up scenes, cut scenes, um, just making players change or making characters in the game change how they're moving, things like that. Uh, you can do a lot of cool things. Scroll map. This, this is definitely one of the best parts and the most familiar thing ways you're going to to get acquainted with the game for cutscenes. This this is where it's at. This in the text command. So next is character. Uh, this is also pretty good for um, certain cutscenes. So I can do slash animations. I can change transparency. Basically it's it's neat little quirks that you can do to, to different events and um, parts of your party. Uh, the way your party's displayed and uh, events can all be sort of played with here I can change the transparency of my party uh, member so that he I can make it so that you can't see any of the party which is good for setting up special cutscenes and things like that openings uh, changing transparency that's that's really where it's at change player followers uh, whether players uh, characters are following you and stuff like that gather followers makes them all just kind of walk into you it's gonna be really good for uh, cutscenes where you, you sort of don't want the whole party uh, moving around or maybe you want to add a character to the party um, and then put them on the back of the party. This this is really where it's at. Things like that are, are really where... This, this is the section for that. So show animation, you can play an animation like a cutting animation, slicing animation, explosions. Show animation is great for that. Balloon icon, now that's useful um, for little cutscenes uh, you can make a the an exclamation appear it's very very anime-ish sometimes but you can do some neat little uh edits to the balloons and really come up with your own neat style of balloon so keep that in mind there's there's cool stuff you can do with the show balloon icon then you have erase event uh this is I, I would say this goes pretty well into flow control. It kind of ties in there, but it, it gets rid of an event and until you leave and re-enter the map, uh, see, so it says that if you leave and re-enter the map, uh, the event will return. So this is really good for say respawning monsters. Next is the picture. Uh, so picture you'll, you'll have in your resource menu over in uh, tools resource menu uh, right here you'll have a pictures folder if you move stuff into that pictures folder you can show some pictures of different things maybe an overlay uh, a win screen 
whole bunch of different things. Uh, it's great for setting up uh, menus and things like that. If you want to create your own menu, um, that's going to help. If you don't want to, if you want to do an evented menu, um, you, you'll definitely want to do show pictures and sort of play around with some of this. Same with move picture. Uh, I can make a cursor uh, move around when you hit buttons. That's that's one of the things you can do. So you can also make it so that something's displayed in the top left, like your, how many hearts you have, or just menus and UI. Uh, you can set it so this is going to be useful for, for parallaxing. There's just uh, quite a few things you can do pictures for. Just keep that in mind. So pictures are very useful. And of course, if you don't have anything in your picture folder, you're not going to be able to select an image. So you kind of have to do that first. And then you have the whole setup here. I'm sure I'm going to get into all the cool things you can do with pictures soon enough. But for now, we're going to move on to timing and then the wait. That's all there is for timing. So wait just makes you wait for a certain amount of frames. So one, it, since this is a 60 second per frame engine, which is typical, uh, you of course have 60 frames equals one second. So it's, 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 it's super simple right there. The wait command is highly useful. You're going to use it for quite a few things. I recommend trying to use it as much as possible because the the wait can really give players a whole bunch of different ways to do things, and it's really good for programming. So we're going to use wait quite a bit. Just just be aware of that screen is just sort of the transition parts of screen. Uh, we have weather effects here that are pretty cool. Uh, we also have the shake screen flash screen, tint screen, fade out and fade in. Very, very simple transitionary things and just little things that affect the entire uh, screen that moves with you. So next you have audio and video. And there, this is your play sound, this, this is pretty self-explanatory, sorry. Play a bunch of sound effects, um, play a bunch of music, fanfare, ambiance. Uh, it even has play movie, so you can import an MP4 or whatever uh, style of uh, whatever style that the platform takes. So different platforms such as um, Android, Apple, uh, computer, Flash, all those things take different resources. And you want to just make sure that you have the right resource. But you can use this play movie to, to just play a movie like a, an opening or something like that. Um, I've done that before in the past, uh, quick little sort of screenshots or, or quick animations. Uh, great for that. So you have all that and playing with them, fading out, stopping, uh, all that BGM, BGS, ME. So BGS is just basically your background sound, your ambiance. Uh, ME or BGM is, of course, your music, and SE is your sound effects. Um, and then you have a music effect here, which is your sort of uh, quick fanfares. Next, we jump over to the third tab. And we're gonna go over the scene control real quick. So this is basically huh, scenes. They're, they're more of a programming term. It's kind of like what is the current, what is currently being displayed to the player, what the player is seeing. So the menu, if you open up the menu, that's a scene. When you exit the menu and go back to the map, that's a scene. Um, when you put your name into the game, that's a scene, your shop is a scene, your game over is a scene. They're sort of like areas of your, they're, they're sort of play areas of your game. So when you every time you change scene, the controls will usually change. For example, you have different controls when you're in the menu than when you um, are on the, in the, on a map. Obviously you can't, if, you, if you're trying to control your menu, uh, you, you can't do that from the map. You, when you go up and down in the uh, menu, it's a lot. It, it's it's totally different from being in the map. So keep that in mind. Uh, it's sort of that. That's basically sort of what a scene is. Uh, you have the game over, the title screen, the menus, uh, name input processing. So you can make it so that a player can put a name into a into the game. Um, and you can even, the, the cool thing about this is that name input processing can also be used for passcodes. Uh, instead of a number passcode, you can do a word passcode. Uh, there's ways to set that up using that. So name input processing is pretty useful. Um, it just makes it so that a screen pops up where you can put a name 
into the game. Next is shop processing and you can choose which merchandise is being sold and the price. You can make it so that you can't sell anything to that vendor. So shop processing is right there. Battle processing is how we make sort of boss battles happen, how we can do touch encounters and things like that. That's that's pretty much set up here. So you can set up a whole bunch of stuff for the battle processing. Next we have system settings. So the system settings, it, it's a lot of the stuff that you would open up your options menu and change. Your background music uh, is also changed here. So the victory musics, uh, a lot of this stuff is, is definitely useful for you to change you can make it so that when you hit escape the player can or can't access your menu maybe you want to make a special menu so you want to make sure you disable access to the normal menu or um, anything like that is done through here um, victory music uh, all the all the sound effects um, or well all the music effects and stuff like that is done here Next is the, and, and of course, menu access, encounter, so you can change it whether or not the player is running into encounters on the map, so you, you can change it so that, like, the player's running through a forest, and then, like, he meets the boss, and then he has to run back, but you don't want him to have to fight monsters as he runs back uh, randomly, so you can just change the counter. Formation access is whether or not the, um, wait, let me double check this, okay, Yep, yep. Uh, formation access is whether or not you can change who's in the front and who's in the back. Um, I just had to make make sure I, I wasn't thinking of the uh, followers. So formation access is, of course, on the right. You can change who's in front and what position people are in. That turns that off. Got window colors, uh, actor and images. So I can change a whole bunch of stuff about the actors. Maybe I want to change him into, oh, no, I changed into a... Uh, bat so now he's a bat and I can change his battler maybe he gets an upgrade or things like that all that can be done with change actor images and then you can of course make it so that you can upgrade your vehicle for whatever reason and you can just change the vehicle image using that and then you have your map so this is a little different from movement because map does things a little differently so you have change map display name or change map display uh, so you can make it whether or not the map is displayed in the top left, the name of the map. We can make it so that we can change the tile set. So maybe you can have invisible tiles and whenever you do something, the tiles appear. Just, uh, things like that. I can play with the tile set and make it so that it's different for where the player is. Maybe they go from a light world to a dark world, but the layout's the same. Um, that can be useful for that. Then you have your battle background. This is good for uh, when, you, like, oh no, he's running into a boss. I want to make sure it looks like a pretty good boss fight. So something, you could just change up what the boss fight's going to look like by using the change battle background. Um, and it's good for, like, if you enter and change maps. So next is change parallax. That, that, of course, when we went over parallaxing in the map introduction, um, this changes that little background image. Get location info is, uh, whew, this guy's a this guy's a big guy. Uh, you you might uh, we might say this for something a little different or something a little lighter, but we can check to see what information is in a certain spot. So maybe we can check to see if in well actually you know what? it's one of the cool things like right here we can check to see if. An event has entered into this area so we can make it we can check to see if somebody pushes a boulder on top of a switch that can be done with this um, it, this is super useful by the way get location info super useful we can check to see if certain terrains if the player uh, is in a certain terrain um, we can do a whole bunch of stuff like that region IDs we can check region IDs this this can be super duper useful for tons of stuff we can we can really set up some awesome little niches into our game using these but it's it's very in-depth and we'll get into that later so next is the battle um when you're in a battle this is the only time the battle uh menu right here will work so just keep that in mind now the battle uh section here 
has a whole bunch of things force action uh, abort battle i can make it so that the player has to or the enemy or the actors have to do something um at a certain point or the the maybe the actor uses or the monster uses a special move um i can force all those things here and th this is mainly not going to be really used here in this event command it's probably going to be used in the database uh, under the troops events so if i go to troops you have the event menu here this is really when i'm going to use the battle commands so last you have the advanced uh plugin commands so plugins can have um commands that do certain things uh maybe special little special jumps or things like that uh, animation changes a whole bunch of different things we can do that through the plugin command and then you have the script so if you you know how to program you can input some quick programming stuff here this can be really useful for a lot of a lot of very cool things um it's 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 you do need to know programming so this is just just keep that in mind you can do programming stuff through that and that's that's pretty much it that is the event command list um hopefully this has been enlightening you you've learned something you you can take something away from this maybe you got some ideas flowing in your head about what you're going to do with it uh, there's some awesome stuff we can do so just keep that in mind that that pretty much sums up the tutorial tutorial thank you again for tuning in i hope you had an awesome time learning i hope you have some great ideas coming be sure to like comment and subscribe i love to know uh, that you guys are supporting me that you're supporting the teaching that i'm doing um, also if you want to you just Tell me a little bit about your game. Tell me uh, maybe what tutorials you'd like to see. What you're looking forward to coming. Uh, tutorials you're looking forward to coming up. I love to have little discussions in the YouTube comments section. So thank you, and I will see you guys in the next tutorial.